Hello everyone. We are in the lecture number 16 of thermodynamics and our today's topic is work and temperature expressions for adiabatic expansions of ideal gas. Now let's move on to the equations which were derived in the earlier lectures. These four were the equations which were derived earlier. This is the expression of final temperature. This is the expression of work done. This is the expression of internal energy change. And this is the expression of enthalpy change. But one thing was told that all the expressions in these three are applicable for both reversible and irreversible changes for adiabatic uh, expansion of an ideal gas. Okay. So the wh where is the difference? That is the point. Where is the difference? If they have the same expression, then they should, should they have the same value? The answer is no, they do not have the same value. Actually, their value would depend upon this value of T and the expression, corresponding expression of T2. Okay. This expression is applicable only for reversible expansion of ideal gas, reversible adiabatic expansion of ideal gas. You remember that when this expression was derived, then that topic was reversible adiabatic expansion of ideal gas. Okay, so the T2 had its own expression, but for irreversible adiabatic expansion of ideal gas, T2 has different expression as well as it has different value. Therefore, for different values of T2, all this minus W delta u and delta h have different values okay so although for reversible and irreversible expansions the expressions are same but their extent uh, extents are different okay now let us find out some alternate expression of work done by the system and firstly we shall derive it for particular and irreversible change okay by the same manner uh, when we did this derivation in case of isothermal expansion of ideal gas so here in order to distinguish from that we are just in the suffix we have written id ad and irrib means id means ideal gas ad means adiabatic and irrib means irreversible and minus sign is work done by the system okay so let's start as usual what we did in case of isothermal expansion integration v1 to v2 p external db no need to explain this is constant okay because this is irreversible okay and this is nothing but p2 so this is finally p2 into integration v1 v2 v1 to v2 of dv okay and finally we have got the expression p2 into v2 minus v1 this is the same expression for isothermal uh, irreversible expansion too but the fact is that when we had put the corresponding values of V1 and V2 here, we put here RT by P2, here RT by P1. But now we shall put RT2 by P2 and here RT1 by P1. So you can see the difference clearly that here RT for isothermal change for irreversible uh, for adiabatic change it is rt2 that means that in that case temperature was kept constant and that temperature was t and here the temperature is changing and that temperatures are t1 and t2 respectively so that is the difference okay so let's put instead of nrt we have to write nrt2 by p2 instead of nrt1 by p1 we have to write nrt1 by nrt1 by p1 okay in case of isothermal expansion, we wrote nRT by P1. And right now, we are writing nRT1 by P1. Okay. Now, take nR common. And then finally, nRT1 into T2 by T1 minus P2 by P1. Okay. So, we have got another work expression for adiabatic irreversible expansion of ideal gas. So, this is we have alternate expression. Okay. It is nRT1 within bracket T2 by T1 minus P2 by P1. 
Now there is a modified form of the previous work expression that means what we had shown here this work expression we can modify this expression and this modified expression may be, ex, uh, may be applied in case of both reversible and irreversible adiabatic expansion. You just uh, keep it in your mind that this expression is only applicable for irreversible adiabatic expansion. But we are now going to have another work expression that is the modified form of the uh, minus w expression which was uh, actually equal to n c v into t1 minus t2 we are going to modify that so definitely that would be applicable to both reversible and irreversible adiabatic expansion of ideal gas so let's start from the previous expression minus w equals to n c v t1 minus t2 and in place of t1 we are writing here p1 v1 by nr and in place of t2 we are writing here p2 v2 by nr okay then take the lcm of the denominators it is nr then in the numerator we get p1 v1 minus p2 p2 okay and this ncv okay this n is cancelled by this n and when this cv is uh, written below r here it becomes r by cv okay so this cv goes in the denominator of this r resulting in r by cv and also we know that r is nothing but cp minus cv so we are adding cp minus cv instead of r and this one is also can be written as gamma minus 1 okay so the final expression of minus w for adiabatic expansion of ideal gas both reversible and irreversibly it is p b p1 v1 minus p2 p2 by gamma minus 1 okay this is the expression of minus w that means the work done by the system so we have got this equation which can be applied both reversible uh, both in case of reversible and irreversible cases actually the difference in case of reversible and irreversible for the same expression is hidden in this difference between p1 v1 and p2 p2 okay for reversible expansion the work output is more that is this difference is greater than that of the irreversible expansion so although this expression is same but the result would be different because this p2 v2 values would be different next is expression of temperature so so far we have got the expression of temperature in case of reversible expansion isn't it this expression is applicable for reversible adiabatic expansion so what about the expansion of final temperature in case of adiabatic irreversible expansion so let us find out okay we have got two expressions for w okay and this expression is for both so definitely this is applicable for ir irreversible expansion and this is particularly applicable for irreversible expansion so these two can be equated okay so for irreversible expansion the right hand sides of these two expressions can be equated like this and uh, by taking uh, n as common here this n can be cancelled out so n is eliminated so in this line we have p2 into rt2 by p2 minus rt1 by p1 and here n is vanished so resulting in cv into t1 minus t2 okay now when this p2 is multiplied with this p2 then it becomes rt2 and when this p2 is multiplied with this term it becomes p2 by p1 okay and here cv into t1 minus cv into t2 so in the next line we are writing here rt2 minus rt1 into p2 by p1 and here in the right hand side cv into t1 minus cv into t2 okay then this cv into t2 part taken to the left hand side and this term is taken to the right hand side here so t2 can be taken as common here so leaving 
R plus CV within the bracket and here T1 can be taken as common here leaving CV plus R into P2 by P1. Okay. Then we know that R plus CV equals to CP. So we are putting CP here and leaving this one intact. Okay. And mentioning here that R plus CV equals to CV. And then finally we have got the expression of T2. So there we have got the expression of T2 equals to T1 into CV plus R into P2 by P1 divided by CP. Okay. So we can conclude that temperature decreases during adiabatic expansion of a gas, but the expansions of final temperature are different. Okay, expressions of final temperature are different for reversible and irreversible expansions. So let's elaborate with some example. Okay, if you solve this example, then the facts would be more clear to you. Here in the problem, we have to do the pressure of one mole of helium gas at 25 degree Celsius drops from one atmosphere to 0 0.4 atmosphere. Okay, so pressure is decreasing. Uh, it is due to adiabatic expansion. You have to calculate Q minus W, delta U and delta H if the expansion takes place both reversible, reversibly and irreversibly. So helium is a monatomic gas for what Cp equals to 5 calorie and Cp equals to 3 calorie and hence gamma equals to 1.67. This facts you have to know okay you should know these facts because you are said that it is a helium gas so you should know that helium is a monatomic gas for a monatomic gas the value of cp is 5 calorie and the value of cv is 3 calorie and therefore the value of Mosso's ratio is 1.67 okay now let's put the values corresponding values of p1 p2 and t1 in order to find out the value of T2 both reversibly and irreversibly, we can get this results. For reversible, expression of T2 is T1 into P1 by P2 into 1 minus gamma over gamma. Whereas for irreversible adiabatic expansion, it's T1 into Cb plus R into P2 by P1 divided by Cp. So just putting the corresponding values, we get here temperature is 206.6 6 Kelvin and here 278.13 Kelvin okay so this is more cold that means more work is done here and in order to do this it has taken the heat energy from its own body of the system that is why it has cooled down more okay and the corresponding delta u values for reversible and irreversible expressions you have just the t2 values different but the t1 values same okay so n is 1 cb is 3 but here t2 is 206.6 whereas here t2 is 278.13 and t1 are same for both and the results Delta U for reversible is minus 274.2 calorie and for irreversible minus 59.6 calorie. Similarly, the delta H values with two different T2 values are obtained to be minus 457 calorie and minus 99.3 calorie, 33 calorie. So take the screenshot of the slides and then you take time in order to understand them properly. Okay the calculations are very easy okay and for adiabatic change definitely definitely the q must be zero okay and what about the work done by the system simple minus w is minus delta u so they are actually these values so here work done is much higher than work done here okay so reversible work done is greater than irreversible work done in case of adiabatic expansion also okay so that's all for this lecture thank you have a nice day